this is the third session of African People and Society. And today is going to be the continuation of our lesson two. Last session, we talked about diffusionist theory and cultural areas of Africa. And we discussed how Hescovitz was able to group the cultural areas of Africa into it based on some certain assumption, which he mentioned as five assumptions. Now, today we are going to continue with what Hescovitz has put down as the eight cultural areas. One of it is the Hottentot area. The second one is the Bushman area. The third one is East African cattle complex. The fourth one is Congo area. The fifth one is the East Horn area. The, the sixth is East Sudan area, the Western Sudan area, and the desert regions. These are the eight cultural areas that Hescovit was able to group based on his assumptions. Now we are going to look at each of these areas based on certain characteristics that is peculiar to that area and we discuss it. Let's start with the Hottentot area. The, those people are initially found on the South African coast before contact with the set, white settlers. It means that before colonialism, these people are found around the South African coast. They are mostly herding people. What they do is that they deal with animals. They are called herding people. They deal basically with cattle because cattle turn out to be very important in their culture in terms of marriage um, rights. Whatever they want to do, they consider cattle to be much important to them in their life. Women interact with cattle and make use of cattle because some of this herding society hardly use, women hardly interact with cattle. For as long as they respect cattle as much as possible, some does not allow women to interact with them. But in the Hottentot area, women interact with cattle. They make use of the language. Most of the language are the sun and the bushmen. The bushmen are found around this Hottentot area. They are, have a relatively complex social life compared with the sun. Now, let's quickly look at the bushman area, which is the second, according to Hescovit. They are found around the southwest Africa, most especially Angola. They are bands, and mostly they are hunters and gatherers. What do I mean by they live in band? They live in small groups, and mostly there are hunters and gatherers. What they do is that they don't domesticate and they do not cultivate land, but they survive on wild fruits and wild animals. They are relatively poor in material culture. Yes, people that don't deal with animals, they don't cultivate. They don't cultivate land and they don't domesticate. Where will they have the material resources to gather enough goods? They are largely poor and they lack more material. Why? Because putting more material and gathering, accumulating material is going to be a problem to them because they are always in the move. They move from one society to another in search of food because they don't cultivate. They have a simple social organization based on the band society in which they live. They have a very simple social organization and they are largely unstratified. There is no form of hierarchy, no stratification. Inequality is basically based on sex and gender. Sorry, based on age and gender, which means as a woman, you know your role. As a man, you know your role. The elderly know their role in the society and also the children. So it is always there that the children, which is the younger ones, will respect the elderly and a woman must respect a man. The next one is the East African cattle complex, which is the third group. They are found around the eastern part of Southwest Africa. That is, they are found around the region of the Southwest Africa. They have a vast geographical 
land most especially where do we find these people which ethnic group do we find them we can see the kukui and the maasai we know the kukui and the maasai because we've been hearing about them even around the television we see them they talk about them they are sedentary people they deal with cattle also because they domesticate animal social and economic life centered on cattle yes their social and economic life centered on cattle cattle is also very very important when it comes to the life of the maasai and the kukui women are forbidden from interacting with such animal just as it is opposite with the hottentot hottentot allowed women but with the east african cattle no women are forbidden from interacting with cattle that is one of their responsibility for them it is wrong for a woman to interact even when women use most of the things that is found in the cattle it is left for the men to provide them get them and give it to the women to use because it's forbidden they have more complex division of labor yes if a woman cannot interact with a cattle she knows her role in the society it means she knows what she is supposed to do and the man has his own role that he's supposed to do he will go to the cattle get what she needs to do if it is the milk if it is the meat he will do it and bring it for her she will now use it for a means of livelihood they have bantu language is also an example or these are languages that is found around the east african cattle why example we found the new, when we get to language area you get to understand what i am saying better but the ethiopia the somali the sudan all are the nilotic language they are found around the east african cattle complex group the next one is the congo area and we know that the congo we also say they are formerly they are zai one they are forested people they are always found around the forest where sesa fly is always there when you see the congo people they are associated with sesa fly they are predominantly agriculturists they are into agriculture they cultivate land much and also they domesticate animal their mode of housing which in terms of architecture is rectangular in shape they have more complex political social and religious organization they have a means of exchange because they believe in markets they have a means of exchange they do with currency even for the fact that they are found mostly in the bush they have a use they make use of tribal marks to associate and distinguish themselves and they mostly use this for ceremonies and the next one is the east horn area this is the fourth area according to ex covid it is a marginal area not east of africa remember class that whatever we are talking we are talking about africa and this is the group that has covid has provided for us which people are grouped or cultures are grouped in africa then they they believe they are traditional and islamic religion most of them are traditionalist and islam there is no christianity they believe in the use of horse and camel it means that they domesticate also they have a kind of inequality they have a very high inequality because the society is highly stratified and they are into trade the next one is the east sudan area the people here are mostly nomadic they are mostly nomadic and most of them practice islam as religion they use camel and goat for rites of marriage and even death they make use of the things that comes out of the animals for consumption also and also they believe they have a very strong social organization what do i mean by a very strong social organization such society like this is highly stratified you know your place in the society when it comes for a man he knows that he is a man 
the, organ, the society is structured in such a way that everyone knows its place. You don't exceed your bound. Then, the Western Sudan area is also one of the group which has COVID mentioned. In this group, they practice animism and Islam. And they have a complex and stable political organization. It means they have a centralized system of organization that is well put in place. They are highly centralized. Example, they live in kingdom, chiefdom, and empire. Take for example, we have the kingdom of Benin. We have the Kanimborno Empire. We have the uh, the Oyo. Is it the the ruler of the states? Which what do they call him? The paramount ruler in the West. So these are the way they are structured in such a way that they are centralized. They can collect us wherever they are, and all the subordinate states are answerable to the center, which is the king. Complex economic life. They believe in dual economy because they are either agriculturists, header, and they deal with commerce also. The next one is the desert region. The land of ancient civilization. When they talk about the land of ancient civilization, our mind quickly go to the Egyptians and the Egyptians and the Malagasy. But the Egyptians is well known to almost everyone. The inhabitants are sedentaries. Example, we have the Tigris and the Babas. These are the people that are found around the desert region. They have a very complex social organization as well. They are mostly Islam. Patrilineal and highly patriarchal and autocratic. What do I mean? They practice the patrilineal system of the family. It is the man that has the right over the family. He makes authority and the women can dare not question their authority. Horses are the principal domestic animal. Also goat and sheep are rare within the society. Now, let's look at what we have discussed so far. This mere is a merely representation. This merely represents a broad classification that emphasizes the traditional nature of the delineated area. But please, class. However, the essentially traditional nature of this culture, of the cultures of this area, has greatly been affected. What used to be there, it's what I have mentioned based on what has COVID has stated. But however, it has been tampered with as a result of social change with the influence of colonialism and technological advancement. Certain things are changing. What we have seen here might not be what we may end up seeing if we try to look at it again because of the changes that we have encountered. Thank you so much, class. We will meet in the next session, which is going to be the session four of this course.